Hello and welcome to this rapid review of the pudendal nerve. Before we get started talking about the nerve, let's have a quick recap of the perineum in the male. Let's start at the top with the pubic tubercle and that would be next to the central pubic symphysis. Coming laterally on each side, we have the ischiopubic ramus becoming the ischial tuberosity, a palpable landmark. Inferiorly, we have the tip of the sacrum, the coccyx, and the soft tissues laterally are the gluteus maximus, and medially, we have a group of muscles called levator ani. Joining the anal aperture with the coccyx is a ligamentous structure. This is called the anocoxygeal body, and surrounding the anal aperture, we have a sphincter called the external anal sphincter. Running across the midline of the diamond-shaped perineum, we have a very important muscle called the superficial transverse perineal muscle. This separates the diamond into two triangles, a posterior anal triangle and an anterior urogenital triangle. Sitting in the middle of that is another lig ligamentous structure called the perineal body. So adhered to the perineal membrane, we have erectile tissue, We've got the bulb of the penis anchored to the perineal membrane, and that's continuous with the erectile tissue known as the corpus spongiosum. So just one of those. We have two crus of the penis which anchor the erectile tissue to the perineal membrane, and these are a direct continuation of more erectile tissue called the corpora cavernosus. Sitting on top of that, we have some skeletal muscle which covers the erectile tissue. Covering the bulb of the penis and the corpus spongiosum is skeletal muscle known as the bulbospongiosus. Covering the crus of the penis on either side and the corpora cavernosus or cavernosa is skeletal muscle which is called the ischiocavernosus muscle. So let's now take a fresh look at this diagram focusing specifically on the pudendal nerve. While we can see the branches of the pudendal nerve emerging on this diagram of the male perineum, let's just recap about the pudendal nerve more generally. So it's the major somatic nerve of the perineum. It originates from the ventral ramus S2 to S4. It leaves via the greater cytic foramen inferior to the piriformis muscle. It passes around a ligament called the sacrospinous ligament and momentarily enters the gluteal region it reaches the perineum via the lesser cytic foramen and enters into a space in the anal triangle called the ischioanal fossa. Now within the ischioanal fossa, it resides in a space called the pudendal canal, which is right inside the wall of the obturator internus muscle. So here we can see it emerging as the pudendal nerve, and you can see that there are a number of branches that emerge off it at this point, and this branching takes place in the ischial anal fossa. The first branch is the inferior rectal branch, most easily seen. It goes to the external anal sphincter and skin around the anal triangle. The next branch is the perineal branch, which can be further subdivided here. So number two is the perineal branch. 2A is a deep branch, which is motor to skeletal muscle in the deep and superficial perineal spaces. 2B is the superficial branch, which is sensory and the largest of those sensory branches goes as the posterior scrotal branch in the male or the posterior labial nerve in the female. Then the third branch is the dorsal nerve to the penis, obviously the dorsal nerve to the clitoris in the female. So this enters into the deep perineal pouch and through the perineal membrane inferior to the pubic symphysis and goes on to send a lot of nerve fibers to the glands of the erectile tissue. So let's just have a quick recap then of those Im important branches. So we've got the pudendal nerve. The first branch is the inferior rectal nerve. It travels inside the ischial anal fossa to supply the external anal sphincter. The second branch was called the perineal nerve or branch, and this subdivides into two separate nerves. It goes to the urogenital triangle, but splits, as I said, into the superficial and deep branches. Number 2A on our diagram was the superficial branch. It's the sensory branch and is the largest of which is the posterior scrotal nerve in the male and the posterior labial nerve in the female. 
2B is the deep branch, which is motor and is going to skeletal muscle and it supplies the skeletal muscle in the superficial and deep perineal spaces. Number three is the dorsal nerve of the penis and the clitoris in the female and it enters into the deep perineal pouch through the perineal membrane and travels inferior to the pubic symphysis to reach the glands of the erectile tissue. Subscribe to Soton Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.